how to straighten a bent crankshaft. During the building of a Stuart 10H model steam engine, which was part machined, I noticed a problem with it. The one piece machine crankshaft was slightly bent and the crank pin had been machined oversize. Two choices, make a new built up crankshaft or fix this one, which seemed like a simpler method. This clip shows the engine as it was when I first started working on it. As you can see, the hard parts have been done. All I had to do at this stage was fettle the casting, but then I looked at the crankshaft. This engine comes from the time when they supplied a cast crankshaft so you could machine it. I actually never did that in the past, I always built them up. This one is, well, not perfect, to say the least, but I think it's repairable. Machining a crankshaft at this size in a four-jaw chuck is no mean feat. It's really difficult to do. And please note, I'm speaking from a non-machinist point of view. And what you're about to see later on in this video will be probably quite frightening to some machinists. I'm a musician, so it really doesn't bother me. What I'm doing here is just taking some measurements with a digital caliper. And I have to say, the measurements are not perfect. And the crank pin is too big. This became apparent when I tried to fit the big end in place. I need to do something about this. So it's over to my trusty Myford lathe. This is a Myford ML7R. This crankshaft is no good at all if the crank pin isn't the right size. And I didn't want to put it in the chuck and turn it because I don't think it would have survived the ordeal. And it's only about a thou or two out. I really cannot recommend this method Health and safety warning, don't do it this way. And if you decide to not take my advice, I will give you some advice. Only apply the file very lightly to the crank pin. Do not put any pressure on it hardly at all. So I did it this way, using a needle file. This is a very unorthodox method, but believe it or not, it works very well. After quite a lot of needle filing, positively a needle filing marathon, I kept checking the part with the caliper. It ended up, believe it or not, being the right size, 9.30 seconds of an inch. So I assembled the engine, as you can see here, and it felt okay, a bit tight in places, but I would think that would wear in. So I fully assembled the engine and ran it. You can see a lot more about building this engine in my series called a Stuart 10H steam engine build. The engine seemed to run okay, but there was quite a lot of wobble on the flywheel. So the crankshaft is definitely bent, but I decided to just get on with the build and sort it out later. Eventually, during the build, it was time to straighten the crankshaft. Here it is in the chuck in the Myford. And yes, you are right, I am using a hammer. Now, I've done a lot of this and I can straighten crankshafts using a soft hammer like this. I'm doing it very badly for the video. What you have to remember is, once you tap it, and it suddenly becomes perfectly true, don't tap it again. This tapping is infectious. Once you start, it's very difficult to stop. And it's really easy to make it straight and then bend it again. Obviously, the size of the crankshaft depends on how hard you have to hit it. This is not a good way to do it. And it's really not a good idea to hit the crankshaft whilst it's still mounted in the engine. Although in the past, I do admit I have done this with limited success. But I would only do this in extreme circumstances if the engine was very badly made. And this little Stuart 10H is actually quite good. One way to do it with a hammer, if you must, is to rotate the chuck by hand and then tap it on the highest point. But there is a much better way to do this, and here it is. This is a piece of 5 eighths of an inch diameter steel that I drilled a hole one imperial size less than 9.30 seconds down the middle of. And here, using a 5.30 seconds of an inch down to reamer, I am reaming the hole accurately to 5.30 seconds. And apart from the swarf in the hole, it's ready to use. To illustrate the point, I fitted the bent crankshaft into the hole in the piece of steel. And you can really see that it's very bent indeed. But with the method that I'm about to show, it should be possible to get it to be fairly accurate. Maybe not perfect, but good enough for the job. This device, with its magnetic base that very conveniently sticks to the bed, 
is a dial test indicator or DTI. This will tell me whether or not the crankshaft is running concentrically or not and it will also tell me how far out it is and it was incredibly far out. Using the DTI on the crankshaft is not going to make it any straighter but hopefully the special tool that I made will allow me to bend it back into position without any hammers or any violence. This piece of steel is an accurate fit on the crankshaft, it's not rattling about at all. And because of the length of it, when I rotate the crankshaft in the chuck, you can really see how far out it is. My logic tells me that if I can get the end of this steel bar to run anywhere near true, then there's a good chance that the crankshaft itself, being much shorter, will run a lot truer. This took quite a while, you can see what I'm doing, I'm gently bending it in different directions. I rotate the chuck to see where the bar is and pull it in the opposite direction. This took quite a while. Well, to be exact, that's not true. It took eight minutes to do this, I timed it. And most of the time, when I moved the bar, the crankshaft was getting truer all the time. Eventually, once again, using the dial test indicator, I managed to get it to be two thousandths of an inch out. I actually forgot to video the dial test indicator's dial. You can actually see that it's running truer than it was at the beginning of the video, and a thou either way is really nothing to worry about. Not in this application anyway. When I put the engine back together and ran it on compressed air, as you can see, the run out on the flywheel is a lot less than has been shown in the series so far. And just to recap, this is all you need. A dial test indicator and a piece of bar with a hole that's reamed to the size of the crankshaft. And this would apply to smaller crankshafts and even larger ones. I don't think it would be a practical proposition on a much larger engine like a Stuart 5A. To straighten one of those crankshafts would require heat and lots of it. In the next episode of the series I'll be finishing this engine then in the episode after that, I'll be dismantling it, ready for painting. So there you have it, a much straighter crankshaft. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.